pleasure for me to be here with you tonight. Um, I got to speak to many of you in 2010 when I ran in the November general election against Chris Zimmerman, so it's good to see some of you back. A little bit about me personally, I've lived in Arlington for 12 years since I got married. Uh, we first bought a condo and realized quickly that we wanted to start a family and fortunately bought our home before prices really got out of hand. And uh, we've been in the same house now for uh, 10 and a half years in South Arlington where we now have four children, three of whom are at Claremont Immersion Elementary School and the, the fourth one is still at home. So uh, schools are very, actually very important to us. We'll have school-aged children for the next 15 years. So that's certainly one of my priorities when looking at a budget as well. Professionally, I have served uh, in Washington, D.C. for two members of Congress and for a lead think tank in D.C. And yes, the congressman I work for now is a Republican. He, uh, he's got a Ph.D. from American University, and he spent 14 years as a state senator. So he's no Johnny come lately Tea Party here. Um, he certainly represents his constituency uh, very zealously. It's the same type of work ethic and attitude I bring to the county board. As I look uh, back in 2010 and, and today, as I look at the county's spending priorities, I really think about, can we improve our quality of life without breaking the bank? And I looked at, uh, over the last decade, our property tax, taxes uh, to the county have doubled, while inflation's only up 24% and wages are only up 40%. So what the county is taking in from its people as um, real estate values rise is far, is far outpacing wages and inflation and population growth. So, as I said, I'm, I'm concerned about priorities. Education is a priority. Our infrastructure is a priority. I was talking to Patricia before the meeting, and she was talking about how, um, like many of you, I've recognized that potholes don't seem to be getting fixed quite, very quickly, and street lights, and all those things that it, the first things the county board should do, the core services, along with public safety and other infrastructure, is where we need to focus our priorities, especially right now. As we look across the river into D.C. and we realize that um, the federal government, on a bipartisan fashion, has agreed that they need to hold in spending, and Arlington is unique as we have a higher per capita percentage of federal employees than I think almost anywhere. If it's not anywhere else, it's as close. And so we're very dependent on what the federal government does, and it's not just the federal employees. It's the contractors, the trade associations, the law firms, and everybody else is, uh, who impacts our economy here. So in addition, as I've talked to small business owners who have gone through the process of trying to grow and expand, you, can't, you almost can't talk to one who hasn't had a run-in with the county government. So I think we really need to work with our small business owners as well to see what barriers we can eliminate to make sure that as we move forward and we really do need to rely on a diversified economy, that we can do that. Um, I know we're going to get, we have a rebuttal time, right? So I'll stop now and I look forward to your questions later. I will just address uh, those pieces of toxic legislation. Um, she mentioned the NLRB uh, issue. Uh, certainly, I believe that the NLRB's role is to make sure that we have fair union elections. Uh, what's been happening recently is they're trying to put their finger on the scale um, to tip those elections toward the unions by allowing what's so-called ambush elections. So um, if it's wrong to be opposed to that, then um, that's okay. Uh, the other thing she talked about was the, um, the farm regulation bill. Now, my boss represents a, a district the size of the state of Illinois. As you might imagine, agriculture is our number one uh, industry. So when the EPA starts talking about regulating dust, farmers don't understand that. And if, you, if you're going to try to regulate dust in the heartland of Kansas, one, it's going to be impossible, and two, it's kind of ridiculous. Uh, if, there's no time to get into the Clean Air Act and whether or not EPA should be able to completely rewrite the law to make sure it applies to greenhouse gases, uh, but I'd certainly be willing to discuss that at a later date. But the central issue of this campaign uh, is not about legislation that I work on. It's about what my views are about the policies here in Arlington. I've made no bones about I'm running as a fiscal conservative and want us to be more fiscally responsible. But the more important part is, when you have one party that dominates every single elected office in Arlington, it creates an insular environment <coughs> where no one's accountable. If you elect me to the county board, I'll be accountable to 
myself, my caucus of one, and to all the voters who elect me. And I think we needed, really need an independent voice to start questioning things like the artosphere and the trolley, um, asking tough questions and making sure that when they start to do these profligate spending measures, that someone's asking. That's why I've called for putting 100% of our uh, county spending online in the form of transparency, our checkbook, and I look forward to the rest of your questions. Speak to you tonight. I know that uh, it's a little warm in here and, um, and we've talked quite a bit. Um, as I mentioned in my remarks throughout the meeting, uh, I, I think it's just critically important <clears throat> that if we really want to let the county board, the existing core members of the county board, know that we're watching them closely, you've got to elect someone that's not part of the club. They, they've been doing things this way for a number of years. It, it leads to, as we mentioned earlier, groupthink to decisions like the artosphere, which we didn't even talk about. It's been not much anyway, it's been a, a real failure. We've been subsidizing something that's just not working. It leads to the homeless shelter that we're just, whether it's a good idea or not, we're just paying too much money for it. Uh, it it's led to continuing to pursue this trolley which has real issues not only with its construction and the stops and whether it increases ridership, uh, whether it, it will even qualify under the small starts program that the federal government has, which is a big issue. Um, there are a lot of studies out there on the trolley that show it's just, it's really a bad idea. If, if we want to keep going down that path, we'll just elect another member of the club. And it's no offense against Libby, we've gotten to know each other, I think she's a lovely person. But we really need some change here in Arlington. That's why I decided to get in this race. I want to change the course, I want to look at how we're spending our money and whether or not uh, we can offer some real alternatives to people and some real diversity of opinion in this county. Uh, I want my four children to, to grow up here, to have a great experience. Uh, we, we've loved it since we moved here. This is home for us now. And I really appreciate your vote on March 27th, and I thank you for your time.